While we get you winter weather ready, this year we take a look at one of America's longest running winter forecast tools. Curiosity about the long term forecast is nothing new. The Farmer's Almanac has been providing a winter outlook for more than 200 years. To this day, their forecast is a popular point of conversation. Meteorologist Brandon Weathers spoke to the editor of the Farmer's Almanac to learn more of their approach to forecasting the upcoming winter. There are several almanacs for long-term planning that have similar names. You may be familiar with the old Farmer's Almanac, which started back in 1792. The Farmer's Almanac began as a local publication in New Jersey in 1818. They now provide a forecast for the continental U.S. and Canada. When the Almanac was started in 1818, David Young, who was the editor, uh, was a mathematician, astronomer, and a calculator. And he thought it was important to have weather for farmers. So what, what he did is develop a mathematical formula that gets applied to sunspot activity, planet positions, the effect the moon has on the Earth. All of these things, plus the formula, uh, is what allowed him to do, to do the weather back in 1818. Since David Young, only six others have put together the weather for the Farmer's Almanac. The role is handed down from one person to the next, each using Young's formula. It's, it's technical. Um, you need somebody who understands climate, who understands the Earth, understands you know, astro astronomy. Um, doesn't have to be a meteorologist because, let's face it, we go back 206 years, so there were not meteorologists back then. How accurate is this method? The publication says about 80 percent. Over the years, several meteorologists have put the almanac to the test. And I had a, a young weatherman in Arkansas maybe five or six years ago who said, you know, you were 69% um, accurate for, for the year, but you were 100% accurate for the winter. So my response was, if I can be 100% accurate on any season, it would be winter. This winter, the almanac's mantra is shake, shiver, and shovel. The Northland is on the eastern edge of the hibernation zone, which they say will be glacial and snow-filled. So we try to do is, is in the best uh, terms that we can, give an overview of the entire winter and then give specific two to three day segments of what the weather will be. They also dive into the weather outlook for Canada. These forecasts are made almost two years in advance. That's how early they need it done in order to complete and print the publication. Um, so what we try to do is break into the regions um, and, and, and I think when you're doing it as far out as we're doing it, that's that's what you can get for for what we what we do. And of course, the almanac is only eight percent of it is weather. I mean, the almanac really is about how to live your life and how to grow food. Ideas to help people save save money, to save fuel, be prepared for what's, what's eventually going to happen. The farmer's almanac provides an idea of what to expect for the winter, but more than anything, the pages are filled with tips on how to prepare for it. Thanks, Brandon. One of the main impacts of winter is on our roads, and the daunting task cleaning the snow can be for snowplow drivers. Meteorologist Sabrina Ullman takes us on the road on what's being done to prepare. Justin, MnDOT has over 1,800 drivers preparing for winter weather. This time we're getting our trucks ready and getting our drivers trained and getting the trucks all out of the summer operations and getting ready for the winter operations. MnDOT has approximately 800 snowplows ready to plow nearly 12,000 miles of state highways and interstates each winter. Different trucks have different setups and we're looking at the conditions of the roads that they are on. Basically we're looking at the, the most efficient and looking at the amount of traffic going on each road and how heavy the use on each road is and treating accordingly. The trucks are also able to assist operators and knowing road conditions. The trucks have a, a lot of computer systems in there telling them the information about what's going on in the environment around them. And each driver knows what they're doing and is paying attention to the road that they're on right there. We watch the radars in our trucks. There's a whole screen here of things that give us hour by hour predictions if, it, if it's done snowing or if it's going to come back in a couple hours. Uh, so we try not to apply any material until we're pretty certain that the storm is completely over and we've pretty much plowed off everything we can. And knowing what to apply is extremely important. For example, salt is more effective at warmer temperatures, melting over five times as much ice at 30 degrees than at 20. We have really expanded our liquids and trying out different liquids to find a way to get rid of the granular material. We really don't want to affect the planet or the lake any more than anyone else. Chemicals such as calcium chloride or magnesium chloride help lower the freezing point. 
Brine, which is highly concentrated salt water, is also used. When we are using brine, we're able to use less salt and it will cost less in the long run. And um, it actually stays in place better than salt that will just hit and then bounce immediately off the road. So it's a combination of cost saving and the environmental impact. Brine is the main liquid used, but it's less helpful when temperatures get below 20 degrees. Then we have potassium acetate, which is another one that we've been using for about five years, and it, it's perfect when it's cold, cold. Extra caution and patience is needed when driving near a snowplow. Mostly we just encourage people to stay behind the plows. It, the safest spot to be is the plow and give them plenty of distance. The roads will be clear behind it. They're coming through and treating it. And before you plan on hitting the roads, MnDOT provides live updates of road conditions online at 511 MN. Dot org. Wisconsin also has a version of 511 that includes updates for the UP. You can see what the snow conditions are, whether they're icy or they're snow covered, partially covered, and you can adjust your travel times accordingly. The links to the 511 websites, as well as a map showing road conditions throughout the Northland, can be found on our website, Justin. Now, let's get you ready for this year's winter forecast. Once again, we are going to see another La Nina year. This is what we saw last year, but this year's La Nina will be stronger. This winter La Nina is likely to strengthen as the winter moves on. What this means for us is that everything is setting up to be just like the winter of 2013-2014. In other words, it's not going to be pleasant. Do you remember this? Polar Vortex. Polar Vortex. Polar Vortex. If you didn't get your I Survived the Polar Vortex shirt that year, well, it's back this winter the dreaded polar vortex. The winter of 2013-14 was dominated by the polar headline, affecting parts of Canada and North Central and Upper Eastern United States. The brutal cold brought in freezing water lines at a record clip, forced many school closures, and pushed Lake Superior to near record complete ice over for the first time since 1996. Making things worse, it devoured the local economy, forcing ski hills to close multiple days and pushing heating bills off the charts, even spurring a shortage of propane. So to start off the winter, snow will start off early. We'll have some early snows to help with hunting season, but the first true snow will come around Thanksgiving. This year, it looks like one of the snowiest months is going to be December. It could end up being in the top 10 of snowiest Decembers. A large winter storm that looks to bring heavy snow to most of the region at the beginning of the month may last two or three days and bring well over a foot of snow. The south shore of Lake Superior will not be outdone as a long duration lake effect snow event looks possible around the 21st of December. Most of us will end the month with over 30 inches of snow. Our coldest part of the winter, as always, will be January and February. In 2013-14, the Duluth Airport experienced low temperatures below zero on 65 days starting on December 1st, 2013. We went on a streak from January 18th to February 11th with 23 consecutive days below zero. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Freezing. Freezing. January and February will likely be just as cold, so start planning your trips to the equator. Only 10 inches of snow is likely in January. Nearly 25 inches of snow will fall in February, while another 20 inches will fall in March. April will likely see snow again as we get over another 25 inches of snow. Most of the Northland this season will end up with over 110 inches of snowfall. So brace yourself, get ready and hunker down. Make plans for a lot of indoor time and like all winter forecasts, try to be patient.